Hello beautiful, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's going to be new makeup releases, the tag. I think this is the fourth year in a row where I'm doing this, basically going through the, the good, bad and the ugly from the new makeup releases of 2022. Letting you know which things I thought were worth the hype, which things I thought was not worth the hype and also letting you know about some curveballs and what we think for 2023 like what do we think is coming up and if you haven't been here before if this is your first video here hello my name is angie i am such a lover of beauty makeup i love beauty makeup and i love discovering new and fun things and that's why i report on the makeup news every friday of the entire year that's one of the things i do here on my channel and if you want to see some more makeup videos don't forget to subscribe because i do upload every day until christmas <laughs> I did film this look, it is already live on my channel, I will leave a link to it down below together with all the things that I have on my face and all of the things that I'm going to be talking about in this video. This video is also a collaboration with one of my besties, this is a collaboration with Samantha March and I'm fairly sure that this is the third year in a row where me and Samantha is actually doing this video as a collab together. So I know that she asked me last year, she's like, do you want to do this as a collab again or did I ask her? I know one year she asked me and one year I asked her. Either way, I think that this is the fourth year that I'm doing it, if I'm not totally mistaken, and I'm fairly sure that this is the third year that me and Samantha's doing it as a collab. Because she reached out to me and she asked me if I wanted to do a collab with her during Vlogmas, and I said, why don't we do the tag again? Because it's going to be third times the charm. We are just going to go through. We have, I think we usually have eight different questions, but I asked Samantha if we can add a ninth question that I'm just squeezing on in, in between because I had something, I had a couple of things that I thought really fit in in this category. So when I get to that, I'm going to let you know what that is. Me and Samantha March both do this. Will I buy it? New makeup releases series. I do it every Friday and I'm fairly sure that she does it every Wednesday. She is the creator of the Will I Buy It series. And I think that I did my first new makeup releases after her just doing it once or twice on her channel. So I have been doing the new makeup releases on my channel for years and years and years almost as long as Samantha has done it on her channel. I think she's like one or two weeks ahead of me, but it's just something that we both enjoy doing and we have a different view on makeup. She loves more neutrals, she's more into the mainstream brands and I love colors and I'm more into the indie brands. She will get two different views on makeup and that's also why I find it so fun that her and I get to do this like just looking back at the makeup news and the releases of this year and just letting you know my thoughts when we now have seen all of it letting you know my thoughts of like how has this year been what's been the most outrageous thing that's happened this year so we'll of course link samantha and her video down below let's get into the questions and if you want to do this tag yourself please do i would love to see your answers i know there's a lot of people out there that are doing similar will i buy it or new makeup releases videos i will leave all the questions down below as well in case you are interested okay Let's jump in. So the first question is, what mainstream release lived up to the hype the most this year? And I had a couple of things that I thought myself lived up to the hype this year. And you're gonna have to give me, of course, your thoughts on what you think are mainstream releases that lived up to the hype. And also if you think that maybe I'm incorrect in these, because of course, this comes with a little bit of not maybe bias, but it's based on the people that I watch on social media, what things that I have tried and you know, all of that. So the first thing, let me actually, let me scoochy scoochy to the side so I can pull up some pictures of the things that I'm talking about. The first thing I'm going to mention is the ABH Nouveau. I think that this is the first palette that they released after the Primrose palette and I feel like the pressure was on. I feel like a lot of people review this palette as the comeback of ABH. Basically like, oh, this is the good ABH quality, this is a fun color story, this is working good, yada yada yada, liking the new packaging, and I was one of them. I really like the packaging, I really like the shadows. I think that this is a really good palette and I had a lot of fun with it. I've used it after like behind the scenes as well. And I thought that ABH was able to have some kind of a redemption with this palette. I thought it was a good palette. Another, and I don't know if this is like mainstream. I don't know if this is indie. Sometimes with celebrities and celebrity makeup artists, you never know if it's indie or if it's mainstream, but I'm gonna go with mainstream because I feel like this is a little bit more well known than indie because this is something that a lot of people talk about even if you're not on social media because like celebrities talk about this brand as well and that is from Lisa Eldridge. Lisa Eldridge finally released her eyeshadows even though I did not try them I feel like the hype was there. So many people were talking about this, so many people were interested in this and I think that overall the release lived up to the hype. It was fairly expensive, 
But the reviews that I've seen on this palette, it seems like people are getting what they're expecting to get, which is what you want with makeup. You want it to be either as good as you expect or maybe like a little bit more. You don't want to buy it and be like, oh, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. This is just a little bit more boring or like not as good as I was hoping it was going to be. I feel like people got what they expected with these palettes. And for that reason, I think that this is a release that lived up to the hype. I also will say that that like liquid glow primer <laughs> foundation mixer from e.l.f. What was it called? Like something... I can't see the name here, but I will put everything down below. You know, the one that was supposed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter? That was one of the most hyped product of this year. And I feel like most people agreed that this was, if not 100% spot on dupe, which I don't necessarily think that it is. It has different undertones. It's not the same coverage, but it is similar enough so that you could definitely recommend this as a dupe for someone that wanted the effect of Charlotte Tilbury, but not the price tag. And I definitely think that this was a product that lived up to the hype. People got what they expected to get, and it was a, a decent product. I mean, I don't really love products like this because I feel like it makes my face a little sticky, but I thought it was a decent product. A lot of people seem to agree that this was a good product from e.l.f. It was a good price range, they had several shades, they sold out several times, and I do think that this was a release that lived up to the hype <laughs> that the brand had. Next, I put the entire launch of House Labs at Sephora, because this was very hyped and people were really excited to see what this was going to be, because remember a couple of years ago when uh, Lady Gaga was saying that she was coming up with makeup. People were losing their marbles. They were so excited. And the way that the excitement of the room just dropped when she was like, oh yeah, and it's Amazon exclusive. You could hear a needle dropping in that room because people are like, oh. Amazon? Like Amazon? People are not impressed. And I I never bought anything from the Amazon House Labs uh, drop, mainly because we didn't, don't, didn't have Amazon at that point in Sweden. We got just before I moved. Yeah, I know, life without Amazon, imagine. But I didn't buy anything. And I also didn't think that any of the things that she released were like... I felt like sometimes when you are that famous of a pop star with that budget, you should have that budget. Even if you're backed by Amazon, Amazon has the money. I just thought it would look more refined. I just thought it would look more exciting and I didn't think it did. There was always something something missing from the releases that made me go like, it kind of feels like you're browsing the Amazon page, beauty page. And I didn't want that. No shade against the beauty page of Amazon, but it is a hot mix of like really good products and just stuff that looks like it's been found at like Alibaba. I just, you never know what you're gonna get and this is why I actually basically never shop at Amazon unless I kind of have to because yeah, options are not always as good as you might think here in the US. People are always like, oh, just get it at Amazon. I'm like, what is the option? What is the alternative? So. Yeah, I'm really happy she was able to come to Sephora instead. Just made the brand look a little bit more, I don't know, polished, trustworthy, serious. It, it not, you get what I'm, t get what I'm saying. The packaging was up, the formulas looked better. Maybe they weren't better, but they looked better. Everything just looked a little bit more believable as a makeup brand from a very famous and very, let's be honest, rich pop star. And I just thought that this one looked so much better. I tried all the things from the line. I think. I think I have tried everything from the line and the only thing that I don't love is the eye paints. They're not for me. I think they're too sheer. They're not for me, at least the ones that I try. They're not my jam. And I also myself did not love the foundation. I know other people love the foundation, but it is too glowy for my liking. If you love a very glowy foundation, that might be for you. Honestly, if you like a really glowy foundation, it doesn't break up on me. So I don't think the formulation is bad because... I got so oily that I was like shiny. Like it was, you could use me as a mirror and I don't even have oily skin. I have normal to slight combination skin in the like heat of the summer. And that one got so oily on me that I was like, I am just like, Whoop. this is a lot, I need a shower. So if you have very dry skin or if you love a very dewy foundation, I do not 
think it's a horrible foundation but i think that maybe the description of the foundation is a little bit off because i am fairly sure that i would not have bought that foundation had the description been radiant because that is what I think the foundation is. I think the foundation is a radiant finish. The last things I have on my list is both the palette by Makeup by Mario that he just released and also that palette from Patrick Todd that he released, I think, this summer? Or was it spring? I don't 100% remember. One was the rose one and the Makeup by Mario one was the neutral one. I think that people were super excited to see this kind of a release from these two celebrity makeup artist brands. And I feel like overall it's very well received. Most people seem to agree that this was a good release, even though I think that both of them look boring. And even though I think that both of them are pretty expensive for what I would want for a neutral palette. But look at me, I'm a clown. I'm an actual clown. Of course, this isn't for me. And I realized that. And that's why I'm saying this is my assessment of the situation. I didn't buy any of these. I have seen both of these in real life. They seem perfectly fine, but they're not for me. So I'm not going to be like, eh, I don't understand why any I totally understand why people want this. I'm just realizing that it's not for me, but I feel like these had a lot of hype. And from what I'm gathering from the videos I'm seeing, the reviews I'm hearing, and how people are talking about them in the comments, it seemed like they somewhat lived up to the hype. Yes? Next question is gonna be in the makeup that lived up to the hype. And I have four things to talk about where two, where one of them is maybe not hype as much as I like, it was hyped in the very small beauty community. And maybe I think that it should have been a little bit more hyped than the like it lived up to that hype let me put it like that it lived up to that hype the first one i'm going to mention is the cosmic brushes serenity palette i don't think anyone is going to be surprised this has been one of the most hyped palettes of this year and it totally lives up to the hype i really really like this palette it sold out several times i mean i don't know what kind of stock she has of course this is a smaller indie brand but it is a really really good palette and like i said i will link all these things down below if i have any discount codes like I do have codes for some of the brands that I'm going to be talking about. That is going to be down below as well if you want to save some money. But yeah, this Serenity palette is just so beautiful and it really does live up to the hype. And I'm so excited to see what this brand comes up with in the future because I feel like now with them having this hype, with having this cool color story and also living up to the hype because people love the quality, she has all of the like makeup community's eyes on her and I'm really hoping that she will live up to people's expectations. Because I don't want to see her crumble and fall because this was such a good release. The next one I want to talk about is the Odin's Eye Sulmona 2. I cannot believe how much I love this palette. I think this palette is absolutely incredible. Such a beautiful palette. And I feel like Odin's Eye has become more and more and more hyped throughout the year. And they really did live up to the hype with this release. This is such a beautiful release. And this is also the release when they had their single highlighters and blushes, which are absolutely stunning and their gel eyeliners. And I'm just super excited to see them go from great to great to great to great to not crumble under the pressure and to release some really awesome stuff. And I'm super excited to see Odensai being so successful because yeah, this palette, it's so beautiful. One of my favorite palettes from this year as well. Next, I wanna talk about something that I thought was really living up to the hype. And this is part two between Glam Light and Michaela. I really thought that this was such a beautiful collection. Lippies were not for me. Nothing wrong with the quality, but the colors were just not my personal preference. Same with the highlighter. It's not my personal preference, but there's nothing wrong with the quality. But the palettes, the way that they were able to take, because I feel like Glam Life during this year has upped their quality of their shadows a little bit more. They have become even more pigmented and they've become even more buildable so that you can truly build and build. And that is something that I really appreciate. Not that I dislike their formula before, but sometimes you can tell that a brand is like, oh, so you improve your formula even more. So it went from like good to great or like from great to awesome more in the lines of that because i appreciate a brand that doesn't just settle that doesn't just say like oh we have a great formula that still sees potential for improvement and that is how i feel about the glam light formula i feel like it's become even better i tried the first glam light palette that jay had with michaela and that was a, it was a nice palette some of the mattes were a little bit tricky to blend with but this palette so good i love the looks i did the mini palette was so cute this was the first time that Glam Light did that Tempan palette and they've done it since as well with the Scooby-Doo and I really hope that they continue to do that because this is just such a beautiful, like 
a little ten pen palette to be able to give their good quality and good color stories in just a little bit more of a snack size and I really like that and I thought that this one really lived up to the hype and I know a lot of you uh, bought this palette as well. The next one I want to mention is something that really was hyped in the smaller beauty community and I don't even know if I'm part of that but I love indie brands and this is the Oracle palette by Bella Beauté Bar. This is so stunning and I hope that I've been able to show you how stunning this palette is. I feel like all, all of the like colored highlighter palettes that have come out this year, this is the number one. It is so finely milled. It is so beautiful. It lays on the skin wonderfully. It does not look chunky or super glittery. It is so beautiful in the multi-chrome sheet and it has a transparent base so it doesn't look like weird gray or like just chunky on the cheeks. It is so Pretty, and I am so blown away by this palette. I think it deserved all the hype that it got and even more. I wish even more people would discover this palette. I do know that they sold out of this one, but when I checked the site, they had it up for pre-sale again. I will leave a link to it down below. I do hope that they keep this one around because I thought that this palette was so beautiful. Let's now talk about <clears throat> which releases did not live up to the hype. And let me tell you, I have a couple. First, I want to talk about the color block palettes by Huda Beauty. I think that this is a beautiful concept and a really co cool color story, but this quality really wasn't that awesome. And I, it just, it makes me sad that bigger brands that obviously have the money to produce good formulas with colors sometimes just get a little bit lazy when they're doing really colorful stuff and when these are the only colorful stuff that are available at Sephora and people try them and they're like Ugh, this isn't a good formula somehow people think that this is how all colorful makeup is and this is not how all colorful makeup is there is so much better makeup out there with these color stories and it just frustrates me when bigger brands drop the ball like this next one is going to be a personal one for me and this is the bad zodiac palettes by melt i don't necessarily think that these are awful but i'm saying this in the, in the whole context of not living up to the hype and melt's holiday releases are usually the most one of the most at least hyped holiday releases of the year and i really feel they dropped the ball on this one this year these were just a little i don't want to say mediocre but they were just so basic in the color stories in the formulas in the packaging it just felt like this was a totally different brand and i don't think that they lived up to their own holiday melt holiday hype with this release i thought it was a little bit weird and i'm gonna say the same with the natasha denona retro glam i love natasha known as one of my favorite brands love the formula of this palette but i thought the color story i think she really dropped the ball with this color story i feel like she was too with the retro that she released so many people were like this is too off the mini retro the she did that burgundy berry palette that i love like i love that palette i think it's so beautiful the color story is wonderful everything makes sense but so many people were like, you're too off the mini palette. The mini palette is supposed to be baby pinks and like mints and like lighter cool tone pistachios. And I feel like she was maybe a little bit too true to that color story in this one. And I feel like maybe she should have given herself a little grace to be a little bit more inventive with this color story. Because I feel like it's a little two-dimensional i think that some of these shades are too similar on the eyes and i think that for a lot of people their favorite mini palette is the mini retro and this is probably why she decided to give this another try and i don't think she lived up to the hype because i don't personally think that this color story is her best work nothing wrong with the formulas i just think that she has been a lot more innovative and smart with her color stories before and i feel like this one like i said just a little bit too dimensional i'm gonna mention the hindash palette and this is just the hype that i uh, built up in my head and this is i think it's called monochromans palette i think the lipstick the lip liner the boy tears beautiful products really high quality even used the lip liner uh, a couple of days ago such a beautiful product and i'm looking forward to buying more of those fluids as soon as i see them at beautylish but the palette 
This was so hyped. So many people were mentioning the first palette that he released as their absolute favorite palette of 2021. This was such a hyped release because there was a lot of people that probably like me saw people's review of that palette and because of those reviews become, became interested in trying this new launch. But this is a formula that is not for me and I would have wished that people would have been a little bit more descriptive with what this formula is because this formula is sheer. Very sheer. It is very creamy you know when people hate when you say buttery but this is very creamy it has a lot of like you can almost feel the binders it is extremely easy to blend it is almost fail proof it's very easy to blend but it's also kind of sheer and i prefer a formula that can give you opacity and i don't think that i could get that with this palette and i totally understand why they are like that because this is a face and eye palette but one of the shades is a purple and one of the shades is a blue. And I am, I don't know about you, but these kind of shades are not shades that I'm going to use on my cheeks. And sheer turquoise just isn't nice to work with. I, I was a little bit disappointed because I was expecting something else. And I'm just letting you know right now, if you're like me and you like full pigmented shadows, this formula isn't for you because it is kind of sheer. Buildable, but kind of sheer, and it's not my favorite. I think the other products that he has is a lot better, and that liquid liner, beautiful. Let me also mention the Patrick Ta blush palette from this year, because I feel like so many people were loving the blush palette from last year, and I feel a lot of people were saying in reviews of this new blush palette that this one wasn't as good as last year, and that that highlighter formula was kind of bad. So I feel like this is one of the hyper releases that just didn't go over well and didn't garner the same kind of positive reviews as the one from last year did. Let me know if you tried that one. I'm just, this I'm just basing on how hyped the palette was last year and how loved it was last year and how people seem to not think the same this year. Okay, next question. Now we're getting into some really fun ones. What was the biggest curveball? I think the biggest curveball is not necessarily a single product. I think the biggest curveball is that we are no longer surprised at any kind of releases. Nothing surprises us anymore because we have seen so many weird collabs at this point. So it's like, we it doesn't surprise me anymore. Like nothing, nothing shocks me anymore. No release has a shock value. We had the those stupid icons from the little figurines that you're supposed to be touching from hip dot. Such a cumbersome makeup release. It, they also did a release with like a podcast for Dungeons and Dragons. And then we have the Fenty and the ketchup like art project with like packets and they will leave either lip gloss or ketchup. Okay. And then we had the whip SPF. And that made sense because we had the Oscar Mayer baloney face mask. Nothing surprises us anymore. I mean, Makeup Revolution did a cheese-inspired collection. Nothing surprises us anymore. Nothing really makes us go, oh my god, I cannot believe they did that. We're more in the... We're more in the area of, ugh, oh my god, I can't believe they did that. I feel like we are jaded and it's really hard to gain shock value in the makeup community. And I wonder if 2023 is gonna be the year where they're either pulling it back or if they're just pushing in a higher gear, really hoping to get us shocked. I would not be surprised. What was the biggest letdown slash snooze fest of this year? Basically stuff that we had high expectations on, stuff that we thought was gonna be really good or when it was sneak peek, we had like, oh, this is going to be fun. And it just ended up being a mwop, mwop, mwop. And I want to start with one where I was super happy when I saw this. And this is that Lime Crime was announcing that they were going to do a collab with Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, yeah, that ended up being super boring. They re-released some hair colors and put a sticker on it and some eyeliners. And it was just very generic, very boring. And I'm like, why did you pay for the franchise just to do this? Why would you pay to use the licensing of like Sonic to release this? 
it makes no sense. It just, it was such a missed opportunity, according to me. I also will say that one of the mop mops of this year was that new Novena palette. It looked exactly like all the palettes she had released before. It was really hard, I think, for the brand to convince people that they needed another one of these super big palettes that looked eerily similar to all the things that they have released before. Speaking of that, Be Perfect and Stacey Marie MUA released their 120th collab, which was the rainbow palette with a slight gray edge. And it's again, it's just very hard, I think, to convince people that they need a fifth rainbow palette when they're so similar to what you had before. How many times can you release something that looks like this and try to sell it as something new? Like at some point there has to be super overlapping colors and I just thought that this was a little bit confusing. For me also a personal letdown was that <laughs> BH Cosmetics was releasing those travel quads and even though I didn't hate the quality of them, I kind of hated the color stories of them and I feel like one of the things that BH Cosmetics has been doing so good is their innovative color stories and these palettes just didn't have that and I thought it was a really boring comeback if I'm gonna be honest but I'm still hoping for the best. I'm still hoping they're gonna release something fun. Can we also talk about the way that Urban Decay did She-Hulk dirty? What is this? If you are ever going to do something green, would it not be when you are collabing with the She-Hulk? She's actually green. And I understand some people are telling me like, oh, this is the makeup that they are, uh, that she's wearing in the, when she's a lawyer. Okay. But is that what people are asking for with the She-Hulk palette? Isn't that every other palette that like Urban Decay has? ever not ever but like you get what i'm saying it was just very confusing why you wouldn't at least do half the palette green her hulk side and half the palette neutral why is it one green or maybe two and then just really why is there blue in the per like why why who did this and per usual, it went on sale really fast. And for some reason, there was also a six pen in here and people were telling me, maybe it's a cheek palette. No, it's a six pen eyeshadow palette with warm neutrals. There's not even one green here. Why? Why would you pay for the franchise for something that's probably really expensive? I can only imagine how much the franchise for Marvel costs and then do this that then goes on sale two weeks later make it make sense. So this is where we are sneaking in that like a bonus question and this is going to be what is the unsung hero of 2022? The thing that you thought should get a little bit more hype. The thing that you thought why aren't people talking more about this? This is such a fun or such an exciting or such a good release. And I have a couple of things that I want to mention in this category. And one of them is the Vitality palette by Unearthly. And I feel like I am partly to blame here because I know when this one was released, I was like, oh, it's a rainbow palette. But I will be honest, this is one of my favorite rainbow palettes. It is so fun the undertones are so great it has a really nice matte white and all of the shimmers are like duochromes toppers and they're like really beautiful and it's just a really nice palette in a really nice packaging and it has the smaller pan sizes and i thought that i was going to be like oh it's not a rainbow palette but this is such an interesting rainbow palette with a couple of really interesting undertones and it has just become one of my favorite rainbow palettes and I kind of wish more people would talk about it. Another palette that I thought was super good that surprised me so much as well is the Glam Light and Barbie palette. This is such a great palette. It goes from pink to purple to turquoise blues. And then it has like almost a corner with warm mustardy neutrals that are very interesting like really mustardy it has some really deep shades the shimmers are beautiful again it's one of those palettes that it's just really really interesting and i'm wondering why the reason is that more people didn't talk about it maybe it's because of the barbie theming that people are like a little bit over that but honestly this is such a good palette and another palette that is just so good 
that I feel a little bit flew under the radar is that palette Topoli palette by Ace Beauty. The palette is so good and I totally understand that the game might not be for everyone even though it's actually a really fun game it's a really innovative fun invention but the palette is honestly so incredible it goes from light to deep incredible shimmers incredible mattes Ace Beauté is one of my favorite formulas it has some poppy pinks some brights but also some murky greens and like lemony yellows it is a really good palette and I kind of wish myself that I would have made more videos with it because of how beautiful it is because it is such a nice nice palette Okay, I'm gonna try and speed through this. I've been here for forever. Even my camera's turning off and it's like, Mitch, are you done yet? What was the best holiday release of this year? And I have to say the Odin's Eye one. Like, I really do think that that Christmas Eve and Merry Christmas palettes were the best release. They did sell out twice. And I know I got some really angry comments. Don't be angry at me. Listen, I'm not the brand. Don't be angry at me. Asking why the brand wouldn't restock when we're still in like November, because that is when they sold out. Sometimes I think people forget how makeup is being done. It is not the owner pressing these shadows. She's using a factory that probably other brands are using as well. So when they are doing it, this is something that I know from before. So when a brand is doing a restock, they will call the factory or mail the factory and they'll be like, do you have time for me? I want to do a restock. And the factory will tell you, we have a spot for you here. And I'm guessing that the reason why Odin's Eye is not, this is me guessing, I don't know. I'm guessing the reason why Odin's Eye is not restocking their palettes is because the factory probably told them, yeah, we'll deliver them January 3rd. Who wants that? And I think that people sometimes forget this. It takes weeks to produce something. And if the factory is already filled, like if the slots are closed and the brand cannot get the release before Christmas because these are Christmas palettes, then maybe they're like, it's not worth it. Because I'm going to tell you, even though you are super excited about a Christmas palette right now, you are not going to be as excited about buying a Christmas palette in January. I have a sneaking suspicion about that. So sometimes it's not that they don't want to or but that they're lazy. Maybe they just simply can't. Maybe they just simply are not able. And I think sometimes people forget that. Also, sometimes when I see why won't they bring old palettes back, it's usually because the pigments, the ingredients that they use for the palette is discontinued. They're gone. Like they can no longer physically make the palette. And I know this is true for quite a lot of things that have been discontinued or reformulated. Sometimes it's just not as easy as we think it is. And the longer that I am here in this space, the more things I learn about things that's going on in the back in the background. With this being said, I don't know if this is the reason, but this is me speculating of what a fairly valid reason would be as to why they haven't restocked it. Next question is, what is the best collab of 2022? I mean, I had a collab of 2022. I had a palette with Odin's Eye. I think that one is the best one. <laughs> That is very biased. Some of my friends had collabs as well. Heather Austin had a collab. Teresa is Dead has a collab. My friend Karen Harris had a, a set with Sigma. I'm gonna be focusing here a little bit more on not like my friends doing collabs because I'm a little bit biased. I'm gonna be talking about some of the more intellectual property collabs because I feel like even though we have seen a lot and even though far from all of them are good. I feel like some brands have really gotten even better at packaging, theming, and quality of the products inside. At least Colourpop and Glamlight, I feel like both of those brands have released some really solid collabs this year that I really enjoyed, where I think that they did the packaging and the, the quality and the theming and the, the actual products that they picked really good. Like the Hocus Pocus round three that they released. I thought that was good. I like the Avatar collection. I thought that was really nice. The Star Wars pal palettes that they released this year. Great packaging, great quality, really decent color stories. And also speaking of glam, like that Scooby-Doo collection, like it is so good. Like the quality is wonderful the color stories the products that they picked the theming and the packaging like they really upped so that you're not just because sometimes it's like are you buying makeup or are you buying merch and i would like it to be i love this like this franchise so much it's so nostalgic to me that i would like to own it but not just as merch i would like the product to be good as well and i feel like 
we have seen not only these two brands, but these are just brands that I've tried. I, I feel like we've seen people maybe refine their collabs a little bit more, knowing that it's not just you putting a sticker of cereal on the top of it. It has to be something more. Like what are you bringing to the table in terms of theming and packaging and quality and all of that to make me not just buy this as merch, but actually as like something I can use and enjoy. And I also wanted to mention that I really feel like this has been the year where Makeup Revolution has refined some of their collabs. They started out a little bit rocky. We all remember the Powerpuff palette. That was awful. Sorry, that was awful. That was not a good release, but they made a really cool palette lately. The Grinch palette that was fluffy. I have no idea about the quality. I haven't tried it, but I thought that was genius. That is a really cool palette. It makes people go like, oh, that is really fun. Also, when they did those lip liners for Clueless, they made them as the pens that she's writing with the, with the poof at the end. That's really genius. And also when they did the Shrek collab, I mean, even I bought something for that. I bought the headband with the little Shrek ears and they also released a mud mask in the Shrek collection. Like that is really cool and really smart. And I really hope that this means that all brands, if you're gonna do a collab, at least do it really good. Do it smart. Think about all the details so that people don't just blindly buy it because they love Shrek. And then when they get it home, they're like, this wasn't worth it. And I, I would hate for anyone to feel that way. Okay, last question. What are your predictions for releases during the next year? And I actually saved this picture right here. This is the What The Foundation from, uh, what was that brand? This is Bobby Brown's new brand. It was called Jones Road, right? Is that, I think that's the name. This foundation went viral, not because of the quality, not because of Bobby Brown, not because of reviews of, of this at all. This became viral because of a viral TikTok. And did this, did this deserve to be viral? I don't know. I mean, the person that used the foundation, I mean, I don't know her. I bet she's a super sweet girl, but I think that like, the way she used the foundation first as a first impression, that isn't a review. And I hope that people understand that when they see that, because she was like digging in and applying on. I mean, that isn't really a review. A review is you using the product the way that it is somewhat meant to be used. And then of course you cannot like it because I know that she came back and then she used the product the way that it's meant to be used and she still didn't like it. That I think is her doing a good job and coming back and saying that, but it went viral because it looked horrible on her, it did. And I think that because this went so viral, a lot of people were interested in this product because they were like, oh, is it really that bad? A lot of people were buying this to review it just because they wanted to see, is it that bad? It, what is this product? And I think um, just with the little figurines that I talked about from, um, from Hip Dot and also like the pH changing li like lipsticks and pH changing blushes that we've seen this year. I think we are coming into an era where just as the record labels are trying to be popular on TikTok and this is how they measure how the brands are doing, not by how good music they're making. I think the makeup brands are gonna be judged the same way, not by how good makeup they're making, but by how many views they're getting on TikTok. So I think we're gonna see a lot of sensational, color changing, glitter flips. Oh my God, I, I can see glitter flips coming back. I see a lot of makeup being done solely for fitting in a TikTok review. Not because it's good makeup, not because people like it, but because of the entertainment or shock value. And I don't want that to be a trend, but I would be surprised if it wasn't a trend because I feel like a lot of product this year has been hyped because of how they have worked on social media. Those shake lipstick, you shake them and you put them on and they're like super colorful and shiny and when you kiss your hand, like nothing comes off. Those kind of things that are really suited for a short TikTok tutorial where you're giving no additional info, I think we're gonna see more things like that. Do I wanna see more things like that? No, I would like to just see good makeup. <laughs> but I think that like, I, I don't think that that is, of course we're gonna still see that, but I don't think that a lot of brands are gonna have that as their main focus going forward, if I'm gonna be honest. And I mean, it, it is what it is. It is what it is, we're going into a new era of social media, 
hate it or love it it is what it is i hope you liked the video don't forget to check out samantha down below i will have a separate video where i'm talking about makeup trends what i predicted for this year if it came through what i think of next year where i will elaborate on this a little bit more so don't forget to subscribe as well because i gotta have a video tomorrow check out samantha down below and i hope you're having a great day bye